I'd like to talk about why we are what we choose. Individual identity is defined by the curated ecosystem of choices we make in our lives. Neuroscience and decision intelligence are creating conditions for brands to cross the previously only semi-permeable membrane into this ecosystem, giving rise to a whole new approach to marketing, neuro-creation. Hello, I'm Nadim Sadek, and this is my Oxford talk. I believe we all have curated ecosystems of choices. These accumulate into our identity. I'm convinced that we're entering an era where creativity becomes the most important factor in us arriving at fulfilling choices and contented identities. First, let's think about choice. Ecosystems are assemblies of choices we make, such as around food, clothing, relationships, and of course, a host of material things. Our personal psychologies are universes of ideas and attachments, limited only by our capacity to curate them. What causes us to bond with things interests me, and in the end, our identities are aggregates of what we have curated during our lives. We are what we choose. When we first arrive in the world, we are largely passive recipients of things people have already chosen for us. The sound, sight and feel of parents, languages we hear spoken, what we touch, food we favour. And as we become older, we express preferences, engaging with different things. We take the steering wheel on our journeys through life, morphing into academic or sporting types, finding ourselves drawn to physical and emotional characteristics in each other. I become a geek, you become an activist, he becomes a player, she becomes a superstar, they form a band. Life is an unending series of choices we make until it ends, and even there, we often try to choose the form of the ending. The incessant curation of choices keeps layering up to a more and more defined identity. Have you ever found your grandmother to be particularly outspoken? She's made most of her decisions and knows her mind. Eventually, your constellation of choices, which include things like whether you're kind or harsh, monogamous or polyamory, ambitious or modestly intentioned, all come together to form your ecosystem of choices, and we become what we have chosen. This pattern is applied to my own life. I'm half Irish, half Egyptian, and have lived in Africa, Asia, the Caribbean and Europe, and worked in North and South America. I made choices to love writing stories, playing rugby and running the 400 meters. I studied psychology and philosophy, became a market researcher, then brand founder, and recently an AI entrepreneur. Like everyone else, I am the compound of my choices. It isn't the case that everyone has complete freedom of choice, of course, but relatively speaking, our ability to express ourselves through choices that we make has vastly increased over the course of history. In terms of global cultural evolution, we're at an interesting time largely because of the new accessibility of everything around the world. Historically, you'd be born into a nationality, religion, socioeconomic class, gender and values typifying your very own family. That was a huge part of your identity. Nowadays, several of those previously inescapable things are actually malleable. Indeed, you can now much more choose what you want to be, unshackled from what you inherit. Let's reflect for a moment. I've heard it explained that when we first inhabited the world, the shortage we faced was food, and we all competed for a plentiful supply. The agrarian revolution gave us all the food we needed, but now we had to compete for space. The industrial revolution made space less of an issue, and our new competition became capital. Today, the biggest challenge we face is for attention. Now, there is a very real challenge for anything wishing to get our attention, and the plethora of channels of information we have, and all the choices we face within those channels, creates a tsunami of barely decodable data in our daily lives. We have to find new schemes by which to pass it all, to make sense of it, 
to enrich our days with it, rather than being swept away by the deluge. We are in a crisis of attention. Take the simple choice of wanting to get the news. Should I watch the BBC, Channel 4 or ITV? Or do I go to Euronews, France 24, DW? Or search further and try NDTV, Ariang or NHK before finally remembering that there's CNN, Fox and MSNBC? All I wanted was the news, but I know that each channel brings an overlay on the underlying information. Largely, we take all these sorts of choices a few times, make a selection and stick to them. The brand enters our ecosystem and displacing it is tough. Our choices are almost endless and the load on us can feel overwhelming. One has to wonder whether our neural resources are actually sufficient to deal effectively with how we must navigate our world. The science of rupture is being born. And in this, I'd like to talk about creativity. We curate most of our ecosystem in an inattentive but nevertheless meaningful fashion. We rely on our subconscious to feel our way through decision trees, navigating us through the options to a place of comfort. Neuroscience is beginning to be able to expose the underlying formulae by which these neuro curations are made. Technology, and especially AI, is on the verge of formulating how we sift and sieve, and what causes us to give our increasingly precious and overly divided attention to a particular thing. Brands and everything else are on the verge of harnessing techniques which make it possible for them to cross what might previously have been seen as impermeable membranes into a person's ecosystem. And just as drones are replacing manned aircraft and conflicts, so too are the instruments of persuasion changing in our world. No longer is the pedagogue the most likely person to move your mind. Instead, it's a brand that knows how to cross the protective membrane into our inner sanctum of preferences. The chief protagonist in this new world is actually an old one, creativity. When everything can be primped and caressed into perfect shape for us, as nowadays happens with algorithms and media planning, we're left with too much starch and too little succulents. Creativity is best defined as a thing which causes conscious attention, subconscious bonding, and unconscious favor. It gets under our skin and stays. It makes us think and feel and do. Creativity is what causes us more than anything to swap something out in our ecosystem. It negates our exhaustion and rejuvenates our enthusiasm. Creativity, that remarkably human, startling, invigorating, illuminating thing that we do so unpredictably, is the most able disarmer of our rational and conscious protections. It's the least formulaic element of the human condition. The new world is one in which brands will employ creativity based on an intimate understanding of our conscious, subconscious and unconscious decision-making protocols and inveigle their way into our identities. It's much more subtle than algorithmic games. It's not an obvious transaction. It'll be a painless flow of things into the bloodstreams of our lives. The thing I'm hovering over as a big problem to be solved is essentially figuring out how to attribute impact and influence on our ecosystems of choice, both in the immediate and longer term, to the phenomenon of creativity. One first needs to have a reliable definition of creativity, then a means of placing it on a spectrum of impact and influence over periods of time, and that enables us to understand the permeability of our ecosystems and how brands can harness it for greater efficacy of connection. I believe we're about to witness neurocreation as a new force in how the world operates. Neurocreation is built on neuroscientific understanding of the operation of our brains and what drives us to desire and find reward in particular choices. It identifies our motivations, bandwidth and criteria for choice. It brings a clarity about what sort of conceptual originality can bring the greatest pleasure and perceived benefit to a person. Neurocreation assembles more fulfilling interactions, better choices and happier personal ecosystems. So if we are what we choose, then things in our lives which harness the irresistible force of creativity are about to find themselves in very privileged positions in our identities. Neurocreation, the collision of choice with creativity, will benefit not only the brand which newly enters our personal ecosystems, but also the individual 
who gradually create some more harmonious and deeply fulfilling identity.